Well, thank you so much for joining us. The initiative to inculcate the spirit of building a reputation for Nigerians and Nigeria by the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations is in line with the vision of the current administration, in line with the re re revelation by the Minister of Information and National Orientation. Minister Mohammed Idris says reputation is an asset for Nigeria. Sally Abdullah Iqwanara reports. Unrelenting efforts to build a nation whose citizens demonstrate acceptable standards of reputation in order to transform the country's image and social economic development. Nigerians from across every sector are here demonstrating commitment to a proposed template for reputation management. This groundbreaking initiative according to the Minister of Information and National Orientation, requires the collective efforts of citizens in order to complement and fast-track the ongoing national reorientation agenda through the National Identity Project approved by the Federal Executive Council. As I all aware, a country's brand reputation is one of its core assets alongside its financial and natural mineral resources. Charity is a begins at home. All of us at the Ministry of Information and National Justice Agency, especially the National Education Agency, is playing a pivotal role in ensuring that Nigeria retains its steps. Nigeria comes back to those ideas for which our founding fathers put on course for this country. I believe that we are going to turn the corner. We are already beginning to see signs of that. Reforms all over the world are extremely challenging. It is your ability to rise up to the issue that makes the difference. I think the president is doing that with every sense of responsibility. I call on all Nigerians to support him and give him more time. Nigeria will reach the desired destination. He was emphatic that the resilience spirit of Nigerians will add value to the proposed reputation project and want Nigerians to distinguish themselves as brand ambassadors. Especially for the media, reporting accurately, objectively, and also being patriotic about their country. The Nigeria Reputation Management Group logo was unveiled at the event in Abuja, Salihu Abdullah Higwanara, NCA News. In the face of potential reputation damaging scenarios, having a crisis communication plan in place that aligns the steps to mitigating damage and communicating transparently will go a long way in ensuring a better society. And this is what the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations is championing with the coming on board of the Nigeria Reputation Management Group. Haman Chapani takes us through the unveiling. That a three years ago is designed to be inclusive and conceived as a professional, private, secure, complementary solution aimed at strengthening and repositioning Nigeria's reputation capital as a core national asset for stronger domestic relevance and global competitiveness on a deliberate, sustainable basis through collaboration and partnership. For Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, reputation is birth. Reputation needs air to survive. Reputation is nurtured with the right character, and when reputation is created and built as an asset, it continuously managed and effectively sustained. This is why Nigerian Reputation Management Group should be Nigeria's biggest possible and core asset for investable value. The image of Nigeria needs conscious, deliberate attention. Today's event is NIPR's robust response to the call. We have the biggest body of knowledge in Africa. NIPR is well positioned and ready to deal on this matter. The Nigerian Reputation Management Group is designed to propagate and project a positive national reputation at the bottom in order to promote our core values, principles, and beliefs as a people. The NRMG will stand on six core values of ethics, professionalism, trust, communication, inclusivity, and ownership while focusing on Reputation Summit, Nigeria's Reputation Day, Charter, and Champions, among others. Our citizens have a key role to play. The image of any nation is not shaped solely by leaders, diplomats, and, or businesses, 
but also by the actions, attitudes, and behaviors of its citizens. Nigerians, both at home and in the diaspora, are the primary ambassadors of our national brand. I urge you to remember that the future of our country lies not only in the hands of our leaders, but in our own actions. We cannot demand integrity from others if we do not hold ourselves accountable. The NRMG is geared towards promoting Nigeria's positive image nationally and globally through strategic communication and proactive public relations engagements to protect Nigeria's reputation from negative local and international narratives. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Nigeria's headline inflation rose to 32.70% in September 2024, from 32.15% in August marking a 0.55% increase. Latest inflation by National Bureau of Statistics indicates that on year-on-year, -year, inflation was up 5.98% points from 26.72% in September 2023. The increase was driven by higher prices in key categories, food and non-alcoholic beverages, 16.94%, housing and utilities, 5.47%, clothing, 2.50%, transport, 2.13%, household equipment, 1.64%, education, 1.29%, and health, 0.98%. Food inflation rate on month-on-month -month basis in September 2024 was 2.64%, 2 which shows a 0.27% increase compared to the rate 2.37% recorded in August 2024. Baochi, Sokoto, and Jigawa recorded the highest annual inflation, while Sokoto, Taraba, and Anambra led in monthly increases. Delta, Benue, and Katsina saw the slowest annual rise. And the mouth is one of the gateways through which germs easily gain access into the body. To guide against this, Experts advise that effective hand washing should be advised as a habit and not a periodic act to forestall the spread and outbreak of diseases. Charles Alpha tells us why this act is still important as the world commemorates the International Hand Washing Day. I speak for myself that I wash my hands as often as I can. When I'm home, I don't really do it because I feel I'm indoors, so there's no point washing my hands. Home science, it was called back in the days of Felicia Sani. She understands the importance of regular washing of hands. And despite her age, she still rallies market men and women on the importance of keeping a clean hand as the Ministry of Environment and Development Partners commemorate Global Hand Washing Day at the Garki International Market, Abuja. Wash your vegetable. Wash your hand. This money that you put your hand your man can catch one. It's a big disease. About 1.8 million children under the age of five, reports say, die each year from diarrhea and pneumonia. And for the Minister of State for Environment, who is a medical doctor by profession, hand washing is the safest way of cutting down this number. If you practice it diligently, I can assure you is your number one preventer of diseases. Even in, in our engagements as, um, as uh, presidents, eyes and ears in the communities, we will trickle down this program to our communities. Because you are the ones that are going to take those messages within this market, within your own homes. This year's Global Hand Washing Day reflects a significant progress in hand hygiene awareness and improving hand hygiene behaviors, which remains crucial beyond public health emergencies. Charles. Alpha, NT News. In a bid to safeguard public health, prevent infections, and promote the well-being of Nigerians, the federal government and the National Task Group on Sanitation (NTGS) has reaffirmed commitment to promoting hand hygiene as a key aspect of public health in Nigeria. Usman Zubair reports that stakeholders re-echoed this at the commemoration of the Global Hand Washing Day held in Abuja. Always wash our hands to prevent the spread of disease, loss of life. I learned that um, hand washing 
it, it helps to stop the spread of the microbes. Hand washing with soap is not just a hygiene practice, but a global health necessity. Globally, the 15th of October is set aside by the United Nations for global advocacy on hand washing. In recent time, Nigeria has faced a resurgence of cholera outbreaks, which is further compounded by inadequate hygiene practice and poor access to safe water and sanitation facilities. Ensuring the success of the United Nations campaign drive is the focus of this gathering. The federal government and the National Tax Group on Sanitation Reform Commitment to increasing awareness on importance of hand washing, which is, is an effective and affordable way to prevent diseases and save lives. The NCGS, through the leadership of the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation, is in the forefront of promoting and advocating for increased adoption. See somebody sitting down to eat and you know they didn't wash their hands, call them out, tell them. You really need to wash your hands. You could get sick. Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, represented by Permanent Secretary, noted that proper hand washing is essential in preventing diseases and also plays a significant role in mitigating the impact of future pandemics. He called for behavioral change and urged parents to encourage their children or wards to wash their hands regularly. We all know that clean hands remain a fundamental defense against the spread of infections illnesses, and harmful germs. High points of the event was presentation of prize for winners of the inter-schools competition, among others. The theme for this celebration is why are clean hands still important. Usmosbev, NT News. As technology continues to advance, health experts are exploring new ways to provide safe and efficient healthcare services. A three-day training workshop organized by National Institute for Cancer Research and Treatment, NICRAT, for biomedical engineers and medical physicists aims to leverage innovation to bridge the gap in cancer diagnoses and treatment in Nigeria. Uchio Gochuku reports. Visualize walking into a hospital for a CT scan or MRI and being told there is no personnel to man the machine. Or worse, a patient with a brain tumor receiving the wrong dose of radiation or an incorrect diagnosis. Unfortunately, this does happen. In Nigeria, the demand for biomedical engineers and medical physicists is overwhelming, yet there is a severe shortage of trained professionals. This, combined with the deadly and ever mutating nature of cancer, underscores the urgent need for more training in these fields. Participants in this training will gain advanced skills and knowledge in cancer diagnosis and treatments. NICRAT, organizers of the event, are leveraging the platform of the Federal Ministry of Health to ensure inclusive participation. Let me assure all stakeholders in the cancer space and indeed all Nigerians that NICRAT will continue to train and retrain all relevant healthcare personnel with a view to improve their capacity for greater productivity and optimal performance in the treatment of all forms of cancers. Like everyday engineers and roadside mechanics, biomedical engineers and medical physicists work behind the scenes to keep cancer care safe, precise, and efficient. With enhanced training, their contributions can make cancer treatments more accessible and effective, bringing hope to patients across the country. Uche Ugochuku, NTA News. You're watching the news on NTA International. We now take a break. We'll be back shortly. Do stay with us. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, in collaboration with the Office of the First Lady, is reintroducing Young Farmers Club in schools. Minister of State for Agriculture and Food Security, Aliu Sabi Abdullahi, made this announcement while inspecting school farms in Dutsi, Bwari Area Council. Ramat Muhammad and SS3 students of Government Guest Secondary School, Dutsi, along with other members of her farm club, are cultivating yam and cowpea on a plot of land in their school premises. We planted them in May 2024, and we are hoping to harvest May 2025 next year by God's grace. The school is also engaged in fish farming, livestock rearing, and vegetable production. 
Minister of State for Agriculture, Aliou Sabi Abdullahi, visited the school to further motivate the students and management for embracing the school garden program. We are having what we call adopted school program. So by adopting you as a school, they will come in here to share latest technology and what is happening in the field of agriculture. Following the visit to the school, the minister and the country director of FAO visited a farming cluster in Buari Area Council. He encouraged the community to enhance their farming activities as government plans to provide more support for smallholder farmers. And the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Metinubu, GCFR, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is for us to help him achieve a nation where no man goes to bed hungry. And we can only do this with great farmers. And part of what the government is doing is what we are here to do, supporting the farmers to really uh, improve in their production. Right to food for better life and a better future is the theme for this year's World Food Day. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Now the governor of Borono State, Babagana Umar Azolom, is leading the advocacy for application of local technology in food production in Nigeria. To this end, the governor has pledged to partner fabricators to make available Nigerian-made farm implements to, the drive, uh, to drive a food security agenda of the federal, federal government. Kelvin Onoye reports that the governor spoke at the 24th International Conference of the Nigerian Institution of Agricultural Engineers in Abuja. Food security is an important element in national security. But the challenges of meeting the food supply needs of the citizens have been impacted by climate change, compounded by age-long subsistence farming method. To boost food production, irrigation and mechanization are considered viable options by experts. This in itself requires application of new technologies. Bono State Governor himself, an agricultural engineer, is convinced that Nigeria has the wherewithal in this regard, but deliberate policy shift in favor of local implement fabrication is needed to make the application sustainable and affordable for farmers. Planters that I saw in 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 Inca, they are working. But again, we shall look into it and then see how we shall improve our form what has been produced. With a very good political will, I think we can rise up, go to the Federal Minister of Agriculture, go even to see Mr. President to see how funding shall be provided in order to produce more. Reinvigorating the dynamics of our professional existence in the national governance space and repositioning our institution as vanguard for promoting agricultural mechanization development. This conference of the Nigerian Institution of Agricultural Engineers is being used to aggregate opportunities for members in the agricultural sector as Nigeria strives for food security in a sustainable trade. environment. In Abuja, Kelvin Ebonwaye, NTA News. The third annual National Conference on Judges' Performance Evaluation at the instance of the National Judicial Council is underway in Abuja. The two-day event is a self-appraisal of the judiciary and a platform to forge a way forward for efficiency in the dispensation of justice. Delia Tumbi of our Judiciary Desk tells us more. The Performance Evaluation Committee of Judicial Officers of Superior Courts of Records, which was established in 2003, has the aim of improving the performance and ethical conduct of judicial officers nationwide. With the mandate of evolving judicial performance policy, thereby giving prominence to strategies to strengthen judicial performance through constant monitoring and evaluation, as well as through continuous monitoring and assessment of the adequacy of the facilities available to judicial officers for efficient performance. In addition, the Judicial Performance Evaluation Committee is expected to strengthen the quarterly evaluation mechanisms already put in place and introduce new measures to ensure improved performance of judicial officers. It is in the light of this that the ongoing third annual National Conference on Judges' Performance Evaluation is aimed at improving access to justice and boosting the confidence of the people on the judiciary. The conference expresses concern on the volume of pending cases in the dockets of superior courts of record in Nigeria. No doubt, enhancing the effectiveness 
and integrity of our judicial system is a responsibility we all share. And to achieve this, we must continually strive for mastery and excellence in our craft. As your lordships are aware, the term judge craft encompasses the art and skill of judging. It goes beyond mere legal knowledge, but touches on our capacity to render justice impartially and efficiently. As of the first quarter of 2024, we now have a total of 243,253 cases pending. This, no doubt, is a staggering number indeed. Urgent and decisive action is therefore required. The second issue is the consistently low performance of some of the judicial officers, despite the continuous guidance given by the committee. The conference with the team, Judge Craft, Performance and the Way Forward, is expected to evolve speedy dispensation of justice in Nigeria. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. The ECOWAS Court of Justice has a new president. He is Justice Ricardo Claudio Monterio, who has been elected for a two-year term in office. Following an election by the College of Five Judges of the Court, Justice Ricardo succeeds Justice Edward Amuaku Asante, who led the court for six years since assuming office on July 31st, 2018. A statement by ECOWAS recalls that Justice Ricardo was sworn in on Thursday, October 6, 2022 in Guinea-Bissau by former president of the Conference of Heads of State and Government of the Community, President Umaru Sesoko Mbalo, for a non-renewable term of four years. It also confirms the election of Justice Ricardo Sengu Mohamed Koroma as vice president of the ECOWAS Court of Justice. Now, authorities in Cote d'Ivoire have arrested members of a student federation accused of inflicting terror on campuses. The arrest followed the investigation of a murder case involving two persons and its leader's main rival. Francis Odojo has a report. Police and prosecutors arrested six members of the Cote d'Ivoire Student and School Federation, FESI one of the country's students' unions halting all its activities. Many in Cote d'Ivoire hope this could mean the end of the impunity enjoyed by FESI, which for years is accused of reigning unchallenged on campuses in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire's biggest city. The authorities acted following the death in late September of a student, Zogwe Mas Arbin de Gaulle, a rival of FESI's leader, say Kabo de Gaulle, was found dead overnight between September 29 and 30. A government statement said he had been abducted by individuals identified as members of FESI. After a police investigation was opened, officers arrested and detained six members of the union, Cambo included. The prosecutor said they were being held on charges including murder and criminal conspiracy. They have also been detained for conspiracy to murder in connection with the death at the end of August of Khalifa Diomande, another student and FESI's member. Reports say several of FESI's high-ranking members declined to respond to the allegations of violence. The FESI set up in the 1990s was originally a protest movement against the single ruling party at the time of the Democratic Party of Cote d'Ivoire Democratic African Rally. Its early leaders included a future Prime Minister, Guilum Soro, and Charles Blair Gould. Charles went on to become the right-hand man of Laurent Babu, who was president from 2000 until an election crisis in 2010. Both former FESIS leaders were implicated at the highest level in the post-violence in 2010 to 2011, in which more than 3,000 people were killed. Francis Udojo, NT News. A UNICEF says more than 400,000 children in Lebanon have been displaced over the last three weeks, just as Israel pushes ahead with its campaign against Hezbollah. Francis Udojo again tells us more. 
Ted Chaiban, Deputy Executive Director for Humanitarian Actions at UNICEF, warned that the fighting is also taking a heavy toll on the country's school system. He revealed that 1.2 million children are deprived of education. Ted Chaiban added that public schools have either been rendered inaccessible, damaged by the war, or have been used as shelter. The last thing the country needs, in addition to everything else it has gone through, Ted said, is the risk of a lost generation. As we sit here today, 1.2 million children are deprived of education. Uh, their public schools have either been rendered inaccessible, have been uh, uh, damaged by the war, or are being used uh, as shelter. Um, Reports say the fighting has also impacted access to health care, putting dozens of primary health facilities out of service. In addition, 12 hospitals are either no longer functioning or only partially functional. Tess Ingram, UNICEF spokesperson for Middle East and North Africa, fears the consequences for migrant women. If there's any sort of complications, and then of course deliver the baby safely. So the fact that we've already seen one really serious case like this on the streets of Beirut tells us that it's happening uh, more broadly across Lebanon. And so we need to make sure that pregnant women have the essential services that they need to safely see out their pregnancies and to deliver their babies. After a year of cross-border exchanges of fire... And that is where we end the news and enter international. Thank you so much for being a part of it. My name is Justin Bermunyi and Anna Lyonka has been a sign language interpreter. We say bye for now.